HBCU Digest Radio, welcome back to our presidential series, Conversations with our Dynamic Leaders from Historically Black Colleges and Universities. Today, we are privileged to be joined by Madam President of Central State University, uh, Dr. Cynthia Jackson Hammond, who has an incredible announcement. Um, You know, it's not it's not unusual for for HBCUs to get major gifts. It's not unusual for HBCUs to get uh, major support for research. It is unusual for a school to announce all three. (laughs) <laughs> or both of them in one day uh, from three different uh, and distinct and reputable sources. So, Dr. Hammond, first, it, it is an honor to have you on again with us as a true friend of the show. Three big announcements on yesterday afternoon, uh, two of them philanthropic, one of them research based. Can you just kind of walk us through this big day for CSU? And thank you so very much for inviting me to be a part of the podcast. And yesterday was a very exciting day for um, for Central State University. And one of our new mantra is that there's more to know about CSU. So we were excited to share yesterday with a large audience about three major uh, achievements that will certainly uh, keep Central State University moving forward. The first one was a gift of $2 million from uh, Mr. Frank Murphy, who is uh, a strong proponent and supporter of higher education. And I met Mr. Murphy about seven years ago, and um, he had a very powerful journey story that really resonated with many of the students that attend Central State University. A uh, person who has come from very humble beginnings but uh, did not let obstacles get in his way and went on to achieve uh, notoriety in the field of business and uh, and many different enterprises. So uh, seven years ago, he he we started developing this relationship and this this friendship and uh, yesterday he said he wanted to give the university two million dollars uh, because he believed in our mission he saw himself in many of the students stories that we service and he wanted to be a contributor so not only was that uh, a cash donation he's also going to build uh, a new student support center wow for Central State University. And that student support center is, you know, a five million gift just within itself. Mm -hmm. And we have already begun to talk about how that building will look. It's it's designed uh, with the idea of uh, helping students just learn how to navigate and transition from from the from the high school experiences to college and then from the college experience to this very interesting world that we live in today mm-hmm. uh, sometimes students uh, and people think that it's just the academic experience that would carry people from one uh, aspect of their lives to others, but there there are other dimensions, and uh, Mr. Murphy wants to make sure that our students had the best opportunities to have a helping hand to teach them about navigating, um, you know, the territories that they will have to just you know meander through through life. So that was a wonderful secondary gift that he provided. But let me just also give another shout out to Mr. Murphy. He's building our new wellness center as a gift. So that's three different enterprises that he is leveraging with the university. Our wellness center will hold uh, an exercise complex as well as our exercise science academic build uh, uh, program. So he has been very, very generous to Central State University, and we are so happy that he is a believer, a Central State University believer, and um you know, want to help us move to the next level. Let, let me just ask you really quickly. Is that so you talked about this relationship kind of blossoming over seven years. So is this a, is this conversations that you've had with him about, hey, here's our strategic vision. Come on to the campus and see the energy that the students and the faculty mm-hmm. provide. What is what is the, 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 the formula for getting that yeah. kind of partnership? 
Well, you know, uh, and, and believe it or not, he had not been back to the campus since that 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 first year that he he came here. Mm. Uh, but we, but he had um, people within his company who uh, would come to the university and would keep him apprised of our strategic plan. Uh, who uh, saw the things that we were doing? For some reason, he just loved Central State University and the students that we served. And I think it was because it was part of his his journey as well. But he had, uh, you know, he had uh, people in his company who would come and sit down and talk with us for years and and talk about how they could help. And so. Uh, over the years, they have done smaller uh, contributions to, to the university, provided some internships, but this was the this was the coup de grace. This was the peace day resistance, wow. and uh, uh, so we're just happy that he thought enough of us. And he has been philanthropic with other institutions as well. Uh, but I think we are the first uh, 1890 land grant university that he he wanted to leave his mark with now you had another gift from a, a friend of central state um a, a, a relatively you know popular person um about business and basketball so this is magic magic johnson yeah uh, so talk yeah. about that that gift from magic sedexo well now that 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 let me be clear uh last year magic johnson uh, on his own mm-hmm. individually contributed uh, made a, a pledge of one million dollars to the university mm-hmm. So Dexo Magic is one of okay. his the company mm-hmm. one of his companies yeah. is is a kind of a separate enterprise and they are our campus catering services. Mm-hmm. They are a wonderful partner to have and that they do more than just look at providing vendor services through through uh, the catering service. Right now, we they will be, uh, we have redesigned, for instance, our library, and I always wanted to have some sort of food service in the library. Mm-hmm. So they have provided that in the basement, beautiful facilities. Because I, I, I'm thinking, if students are going to study, they should not have to leave the library to get, uh, you know, something to eat mm-hmm. if they are in deep study. Mm-hmm. So they provided that. Then secondly, uh, they will be building uh, a campus grocery store. Wow. But it's not just a campus grocery store. It would be a community grocery store because we are not in a city. We are in a community. Mm -hmm. And there are people in the community who should not have to travel, you know, 10 miles down the road to go to a grocery store. So that would be a new enterprise on the campus. So this would be an Uh, extension for the community to come onto campus and, and grocery shop. Wow. Very yes, impressive. absolutely, and, and the campus is surrounded by residents, mm-hmm. you know, so they can certainly come to the campus and get that bread, that milk, those eggs, yeah. you know, those fresh vegetables without, you know, uh, a lot of inconvenience. Mm-hmm. Thirdly, uh, Sodexo Magic, the, they have uh, uh, gifted $1.4 million for us to build a new football field and track mm. so uh, we are excited about those those partnerships and when I talk about partnerships these are part and we are very selective about the partners that we give I mean that we enter into business with because it has to be more than just a uh, a one quick commodity mm-hmm. we want partners that are going who are going to invest and our students invest long term uh, in the university, and that's what the Dexa Magic has done. And they have proven to be great in providing internships for our students and opportunities for the university to continue to grow. Uh, that that that's beyond impressive. And if, and if that wasn't enough, and in the third <laughs> tier of this is is a major major announcement. Yeah. about the the university uh, entering into the hemp research and development arm now let me let me set the stage for folks who don't know it's only been a handful of years that central state rightly and after almost a century is designated mm-hmm. as a land grant institution this is under your leadership uh, yeah. so now there's federal designation for that there's federal money that comes for that and now that 
the the federal government has cleared the way for college universities to enter into this this field uh, for research and development and manufacturing. Mm -hmm. A number of HBCUs have gotten into it to their financial benefit. Central State is the first in Ohio, correct? Yes. To have this enterprise. Yes. Talk, talk a little bit about what this means and, and how much it means, not only to Central State, but to Ohio. Yes. And, and that's the most important thing for Central State to be the research hub for this, this new commodity. And the commodity is really designed to help Ohio farmers look at their farming enterprise differently. Mm -hmm. uh, there are so many possibilities for the use of hemp, and of course we all know the nature of hemp and medicinal purposes. Mm -hmm. So have an uh, outstanding researcher here. We, uh, the, 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 the state legislature, just approved the, the use of research for hemp uh, last, I think it was last Thursday. Uh, we put in our application on Friday, <laughs> and we planted seeds <laughs> on Wednesday. Uh, no, <laughs> so, right. we were, so, so for a whole year, mm -hmm. we have had our application ready because we know what this is going to do for increasing opportunities for Ohio farmers and for the business community. Right. And as an 1890 land grant, that's what we are supposed to do, enhance the quality of life, not only uh, from a health perspective, but from an economic prosperity perspective, uh, perspective for, uh, for the citizens. It allows our students to learn how to have uh, research opportunities and a research lab and, uh, and and so we're just going to grow this as much as we possibly can for the purpose of improving uh, the citizenry of Ohio. You know, and then the final question, you guys have been HBCU of the year. You've been president of the year for initiatives just like this. Uh, how do you continue to find ways to set new standards for how you can expand the academic enterprise, how you mm -hmm. expand the community outreach enterprise? When you've already come so far um yeah. you know most presidents will talk offline and say you know once you do some good you got to go because <laughs> this is a <laughs> this is this is a job where they, you know you you take it to to be fired but you you have taken it and you're you keep setting these new thresholds like how does that work is it a community effort is it part of a strategic plan yeah. that you had coming into the job how does this how does this keep mm -hmm. taking positive steps well forward? well i'm i I, I was fortunate to have uh, a faculty and staff who were eager to grow and continue to grow. And we often talk in, in many of our forums about what, what's next. Even if, you know, when we achieve something, that's for that moment. Mm -hmm. Now you have to say, okay, now what's next? Because if you're going to be competitive in higher ed, if you're going to have uh, an opportunity to make a difference, a sustained difference, you, you must continue to think about tomorrow. We just had our university institute uh, yesterday, actually, uh, in the morning. Uh, and the theme was Growth 360. Mm -hmm. All around growth, what is CSU's plan? So although our current strategic plan ends 2020, we are setting the stage for the next strategic plan. And we look at how do we engage the community? What do we provide for the community? And, and, we, and we have this, this understanding that education is supposed to enrich not only the students' that attend the university, but give them the tools to enrich the communities in which they will reside and work. So our mission is very expansive, very broad, and we know that, uh, that we have a responsibility. And that responsibility is to continue to thrive and to continue to be innovative. And so that's our, that's our DNA, that's our vision, that's our, our task. And so we bring to the table as many people uh, from the communities, from 
pol- from the, uh, the, the from government, from uh, you know society, uh, organizations. I said, let's think with us. Let's all think together about these things, and that's that's what we do.